Hello students, hope you are doing well. In this video, we are going to discuss Enterprise Edge WAN Technologies Part 1 of Unit 4, Designing Remote Connectivity for the Subject Enterprise Network Design B7 Semester IT, University of Mumbai. In this unit, we will discuss the WAN function that provide access to remote site and outside world. It details WAN technology and WAN design consideration. This unit also explores how these technologies are used, including for remote area access with virtual private networks for backup and how the internet is used as a backup WAN. So let us start with first topic, enterprise age WAN technologies. It is divided into part one, part two and part three. In part one, we will cover introduction to WAN WAN interconnection and traditional WAN technologies that is packet switch network topologies. Introduction to wide area networks. A WAN is data communication network that covers a relatively broad geographic area. A WAN typically uses the transmission facilities provided by service providers or SP also called carriers such as telephone companies. Switches or concentrators connect the WAN links, relay information through the WAN and enables the services it provides. A network provider often charges users a fee that is called a tariff for the service provided by the WAN. Therefore, WAN communication is often known as service. The purpose of the Cisco Enterprise architecture is to modularize the enterprise network. All WAN connections are concentrated in a single functional area enterprise age a van provides the enterprise age with access to remote sites and the outside world using various layer 2 and layer 3 technologies vans operate between enterprise age and service provider age designing a van is challenging task the first design step is to understand the van's networking requirement and these are driven by two primary goals. First is service level agreement and second is cost of investment and uses. So let us see service level agreement. Network carry application information between computers. If the applications are not available to the users, the network fails to achieve the design objective. Organizations need to define the level of service such as bandwidth, allowed latency packet loss and so forth that is acceptable for the application running across the van now come to cost of investment and uses van designers are always subject to budget limitations selecting the right type of van technology is critical to providing reliable service for end user application in a cost effective and efficient manner so considering these two goals there are certain objective First objective is a well-designed van must reflect the goals, characteristics and policies of an organization. The selected van technology should be sufficient for current and some extent future application requirement. And the third thing is the associated cost investment and uses should stay within the budget limit. Van interconnections. So this diagram shows enterprise campus, enterprise age, service provider and multi-layer switches and servers are there and enterprise teleworker is also shown here and PSTN network several things are shown so it is already seen in previous units so an enterprise age consists of e-commerce module and internet connectivity module these are the public modules directly supported by internet service provider so this figure illustrates the three ways that the technology connect the enterprise age module with the outside world okay first uh, represented by service providers networks so typically the intent is to provide the connections of connectivity between the enterprise age module enterprise age module and isp age module the two thing is there next is connectivity between enterprise sites across the isp network so enterprise sites across the isp network then connectivity between enterprise sites 
across the service provider or PSTN carrier network. PSTN or service provider carrier network. So these are the different different services. WAN connections can be point to point between two locations or connections to a multi point WAN service offering, such as a frame relay or multi protocol label switching MPLS network. The available service provider offering often limit designer and thus directly affect the WAN selection process. Review the availability of offerings from multiple service providers to support your WAN design. So multiple uh, service providers are there on the basis of their services and their offerings. We can decide which network we need to choose. One of the main issue in WAN connection is selecting the appropriate physical WAN technology. So let us discuss each of the technology one by one. Traditional WAN technologies. First is lease line. Point to point connection indefinitely reserved for transmission rather than use only when transmission is required. The carrier establishes the connection either by dedicating a physical wire or delegating a channel using frequency division multiplexing or time division multiplexing FDM or TDM. This is older technology. Lease line connections usually use synchronous transmission. And these types of lines were available during 2006, 7, and before that time. Nowadays, it is not uh, means we are not using lease line or we use lease line, but in some other form. Now come to sur uh, circuit switch network. Circuit switching is there. A type of network that for duration of the connection obtains dedicates a physical path for single connection between two network endpoint. Ordinary voice phone services over PSTN is a circuit switch. The telephone company reserves a specific physical path to the number being called for calls duration. During the time, no one else can use the physical lines involved. Other circuit switch example include synchronous serial transmission and ISTN. Next is packet switch and cell switch network. Whenever we are talking about cell, it is ATM, asynchronous transmission mode. A carrier creates permanent virtual circuit or switch virtual circuit, SVC or PVC. SVC or PVC that deliver packet of data among customer sites. Users share common carrier resources and can use different path through the van for example when congestion or delay is encountered this allows the carrier to use its infrastructure more efficiently than it can use lease point to point links example of packet switch network includes x.25 frame relay and switch multi megabit data service Lease lines and circuit switch networks offer user dedicated bandwidth that other user cannot take. In contrast, packet switch network have traditionally offered more flexible and use network bandwidth more efficiently than circuit switch network. Cell switching combines some aspect of circuit switching and packet switching to produce network with low latency and high throughput. Now come to circuit or packet or cell switch versus the open system interconnection model osi model circuit switch technology properly fit into layer one of the open system interconnection so this is coming under layer one okay the physical layer one osi protocol described method for binary encoding on physical transmission media. PSTN network, however, use analog method to encode data on phone line for a network device such as router to interface with the uh, analog network. A means of con converting binary encoded data to analog is required. This function is provided by the 
modulator or demodulator that is modem isdn network on the other hand are digital the d in isdn stands for digital there is no need to convert from digital to analog so services adopt to an isdn network using not a modem but terminal adopter in contrast packet and cell switch network operate at the data link layer okay packet or cell switch network is operated at data link layer 2 of the osi model as such they use protocol that defines method to control access to the physical layer allowing many conversation to multiplex over the same physical transmission medium this is achieved by framing the binary transmission at layer 2 and providing addressing to identify the endpoints of the data link virtual circuits either permanent or switch provides a logical path between endpoints in the same way that circuit switch technology create a physical path packet switch network technologies topologies not technologies so there are three different topologies available star or hub spoke topology then fully mesh topology and partially mesh topology so here you can see that this is star or hub type of a spoke topology star topology star like diagram is shown fully mesh means each and every devices are connected to each other so this is mesh and partially mesh means some of the devices are connected fully connected and some other are partially connected like tree so this is partially mesh topology in case of star topology this is also called hub and spoke topology features a single internetworking hub for example a central router that provides access from remote network into core router communication between remote network is possible only through the core router the advantage of star topology are simplified management and maximized tariff cost which results from low number of circuits however disadvantages are significant including the central router the hub is a single point of failure if it fails then no communication is going on the central router limits overall performance for access to centralized resources because all traffic intended for the centralized resources or for the other regional uh, routers goes through this single device so this topology is also not scalable so these are the three different uh, disadvantages of star topology now come to full fully mesh topology to overcome the disadvantages of this central tendency of router we use fully mesh router or fully mesh topology in a fully mesh topology each routing node on the periphery of given packet switching network has a direct path to every other node providing any to any connectivity this the key rationale for creating fully mesh environment is to provide high level of redundancy however a fully mesh topology is not scalable to large packet switch network there are issues associated with this in case of large number of virtual circuit required one for every connection between routers the number of circuit required in fully mesh topology is n into n minus 1 divided by 2 suppose we have 40 number of nodes okay so we need to multiply 40 into 39 divided by 2 so this is 4 9 sir, 36 and 4 3 sir, 12 12 plus 3 15 1 5 6 0 divided by 2 that is 7 8 0 7 80 total number of connections we need fine so 7 80 wires for only 40 connections 40 connections requires 780 different different connections the problem associated with the requirement for large number of packet and broadcast replication the configuration complexity of routers that must handle the absence of multicast support in the non broadcast environment so these are the disadvantages of using or limitations of using fully mesh topology now come to partially mesh topology a partially mesh topology reduces within 
within a region the number of routers that have direct connection to all other nodes within the region not all nodes are connected to all other nodes for a non mesh node to communicate with another non mesh node it must send traffic through one of the fully connected routers there are many forms of partially mesh topology in general partially mesh approach provides the best balance for regional topologies in terms of number of virtual circuit redundancy and performance here we have lot of flexibility when particular router is of more important than it is connected to a, par, a fully mesh topology otherwise if there is very less number very less amount of load then we use partially means a tree topology or a star topology kind of thing so in this in this lecture we have covered introduction to wan wan interconnection traditional wan technologies like these line circuit switching network packet switch and cell switch network then circuit packet cell switch versus the open system interconnection model that is osi model then packet switch network topology star fully mesh and partially mesh in next lecture we will discuss the remaining part of enterprise age wan technology part 2 thank you very much bye bye have a nice day have a nice time